Hey guys, what is up? My name is Adam. I work here on the recipe team here at Inertial Labs. And today I'm going to be giving you guys a walkthrough tutorial on how to correctly set up your recipe payload on your drone, as well as the online interface, an example flight, and processing your data in PC Master. So I hope you guys enjoy and just sit back and watch. All right, don't mind all the bugs in the background, but right now I'm outside. We have our drone, our recipe payload, as well as our Wi-Fi antenna, our USB drive, our GNSS antenna, and then our controller. Let's go ahead and get everything set up. All right, we're gonna first start with our GNSS antenna. You're gonna wanna mount it in a way where it'll be very easily visible to satellites. On the top of the drone is always gonna be a good bet. And from there, you're gonna wanna route the GNSS cable in a fashion where it will not allow for any kinks in the cable and as well as it won't intrude on any of the propellers on the vehicle. Okay, and from here we are ready to set up our unit as well as hook it up to the drone. You're going to need your USB drive as well as your Wi-Fi antenna. So we can go ahead and start by screwing in our Wi-Fi antenna. Just make sure you screw it into the Wi-Fi port, otherwise you'll accidentally screw it into the GNSS port. Then we can go ahead and also plug in our USB drive. And from me here, in order to hook it up, you're gonna see a red and white dot on the sky port on the unit, as well as a red dot on the drone itself. You're gonna start by lining up the white dot with the red dot. And you're simply gonna push up and twist until you hear a click. And we can see that is now securely mounted. From here, we're gonna go ahead and screw in our GNSS antenna. And we can also double check just to make sure that the propellers are not intruding on the cable itself. And we can see that we are good to go. We can go ahead and power on the unit. And once you're ready to power on your unit, you're gonna to wanna to first make sure your drone is on because it supplies power to the recipe. And then we can go ahead and hit the power button. You will see the three boot lights come up. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple pauses over the course of this video just to point out a couple things. And the one thing I want to point out here is just the power button and its functions along with the uh, LED lights that show up on the side. So the power button has a couple functions. One, obviously, for power. You can press it once to turn on and then hold down for four seconds to turn it off. And if the unit is already on, if you press once, it'll start a recording. And then if you press again, it will also stop a recording. And as for the LED lights, the main one you want to look at is the GNSS light. If it is flashing between red and green, that means that your satellite count is good. You can also see that once again uh, later, I will show in the online GUI. And from here, we will listen for the initialization from the ladder, as well as the two camera clicks for the initialization for the camera. And now we're all set up on the drone. Now we can go ahead and get our flight controller set up. Okay, and before we connect to the device, we're gonna go ahead and set up the controller. So you can start by turning it on by single and long pressing. All right, and from here, we're gonna hit pilot two. So if you're gonna enter into camera view, that's gonna be for people that want to fly free-handed. But if you already have a flight route set or you would like to create one, go ahead and enter into flight routes. And you can either create one up here, or if you already have one preset, you can go ahead and tap it, which we do. And next it'll show you a preview of your route. So we can see we start here, and then we go completely vertical, and then we start with our five meters per second for five seconds, and then we go into our figure eight. And from there, we will complete our flight mission. 
And then finally we will finish with, once again, five meters per second for five seconds and then land completely vertical. Okay, and I just wanna take this pause to emphasize the importance of convergence maneuvers. We have many support cases that come in to us um, just with people not performing the correct convergence maneuvers or just flat out not performing them at all. These are very important because it calibrates the heading for the unit. And if you do not perform these, it can end up in a similar fashion to bad satellite coverage where you will just get very inaccurate data. And now we can go ahead and start this mission by hitting play. And next it'll bring you into the pre-flight checklist. If you want to just double check everything, make sure it looks good. Then we can go ahead and hit next. And then from here, we can scroll down and hit upload flight mission. And then after that, you would click start. But just make sure you do not hit start until you've already started recording and finished your static alignment. In this case, upload flight mission is grayed out for me just because simply I'm inside right now and I do not want my drone flying around inside my house. Alrighty, and the next step is gonna be connecting to the device itself. So if you wanna go on any device, you can just hop into Wi-Fi and you will see the unit pop up right here. You can simply connect to that. And if you're on Windows, it'll ask for a eight digit pin. Make sure you hit connect using a security key. Then you're gonna type in LiDAR. and INS. And sometimes it'll take a second to connect, but usually by now, we can go ahead and enter into the device settings. And you can get to that by just opening up any browser and typing in 192 dot one six eight dot one two dot one and you can see that we are now into the device's interface and in here you can see right here it'll show you your gnss solution and your satellite count we recommend usually about at least 10 before you start a flight otherwise your solution might be a little bit inaccurate and then below that you can see the lidar is showing up you just want to make sure both of these are present and then you also see the camera is also showing up. So you just wanna check those and make sure everything appears and it looks like we're all good. The next thing we're gonna check out is going to settings and then geometry. And we're gonna go scroll down to the bottom and we can see there's alignment and our camera trigger. You wanna make sure your alignment says five, four, four, and then your camera trigger is at five. This is what we recommend, a camera trigger period of five seconds if you're going five meters per second. And since camera trigger period and velocity are inversely proportional, if you go at a speed of 10 meters per second, you're gonna to wanna to bump this down to 2.5 seconds. All right, and the next pause I wanna take is gonna be explaining the camera trigger period. So some people may think that it might be a good idea to keep the camera trigger period lower to get more pictures but that in fact is a bad idea just because if you're taking more pictures and you're going at a slower speed the pictures will overlap creating blurry edges so when you go in on the cloud after you render it it may ap appear very blurry and hard to see next if you go over to the storage tab you're going to see everything that will show up for your usb drive first you can see detach and format you're gonna to wanna to detach your USB drive when you are taking it out while the unit is on. That way, there won't be any sort of data loss. And then simply, if you wanna just plug it back in, you would plug the drive back into the unit and then hit reattach. And then format is exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna go ahead and format that drive for you, but just make sure that you have everything that is on the drive backed up to another computer or another storage device. And below here, you can see the contents of the USB drive itself and you're actually able to go into the folders and see everything that is in each of the file folders. So pretty neat. And now we can go back to status, scroll down. And so since we've already checked everything, we can go ahead and start recording. So we can simply hit start. And now we can scroll down and you can see points are already being logged. 
and camera in images are being taken. You want to make sure you wait 30 seconds for your static alignment to finish and then you can take off and once you are finished after you take off you want to make sure you disconnect from the Wi-Fi. You can simply just turn off Wi-Fi. And once you're finished recording your data, you're going to want to hop back into the same 192.168.12.1 after reconnecting to the Wi-Fi. And you're simply just going to scroll down, make sure you wait your 30 seconds for your final static alignment, and then you're just going to tap stop. This will stop the recording. You just want to give it a couple seconds to finish logging any data, and then you can finally hit shut down in the bottom corner. Okay, and when you're ready, you can go ahead and put in your USB drive into your computer, open File Explorer, and transfer over your flight folder. And once you're finished, you're going to want to make sure that you have your base file if you're doing a PPK data set. So you can go ahead and throw that in the data folder that is in the flight folder. That's just to make sure you know where it is. And from here, you're going to open up your local license manager that should have been installed when you installed PC Master. You're going to want to make sure that your license is activated. If it is not, you can just go down to the bottom and activate it by putting in your code.
and then we can go ahead and double click on the ppk.pcmp file and it should open PC Master and you can see at the bottom it starts to unpack everything in that flight folder for you. The first thing that's going to pop up is going to be your base measurements file. This is just your base file that I pointed at earlier. So you can go into your data file and go ahead and select that. And from here, it will prompt you for the location where you flew. You can go ahead and usually just hit OK. It's good at knowing your location. From there, you'll be prompted with a couple graphs, one of them being the GNSS quality, which is just showing the quality of your flight. You want to make sure this converges as much as possible at zero. From there, you will see your IMU antenna lever arm refinement. Just let this run and it will refine that lever arm for you. Once it's refined, it's going to go ahead and process the tightly coupled trajectory and just give that a couple minutes to finish up as well. And once that is complete, you can see down in the bottom corner, it'll start populating the visualizer. And once we get into PC Master, all you're gonna have to do is go up to the top corner and hit produce LAS. You can look down in the bottom corner and see it starts saving it to PBK Cloud One. And once that's finished, you can look into your flight folder and see that there is a now a clouds folder And once it's finished saving, it'll show up in there for you. Keep in mind that this is going to be just for the LiDAR and not the LiDAR and the camera. So in order to get that, those camera images in there, you're gonna to go to your ppk.pcpp .pp file, right click and hit process. And this will begin processing that we're gonna go ahead and fast forward through so you don't have to sit here for the next 10 minutes. And once that's finished, you can go back into your clouds folder and you'll see PP Clay Cloud 1 colorized. And that's going to have your full LiDAR cloud as well as your pasted color images. And that's all there is to it. I hope you guys got something out of this to help you gain a better understanding of your recipe unit. Just a friendly reminder to keep an eye out for things like weather or any circumstance that might put pressure on you. Because this is a very important process that you need to take nice and slow. Um, but if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to support at inertialabs.com and we will be happy to help. Um, I thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.